this is just driving me nuts. Actually, I see pretty good with it. I see better with my older glasses than I do my newer glasses, to be honest with you. These actually even feel better on my face. But I went out walking just a few minutes ago. I went out walking a few minutes ago, and as you see here in this picture of me walking, I had those glasses on my face, and then I came inside. And I've lost them. And I know they've got to be. They have got to be. they got to be in this apartment. I know they are. Because that video I was made. I had the glasses on my face. I came inside and I took my sweatpants off, my coat off. I sat down in front of my computer. Let's see, I was in the... I have been all over everywhere and I cannot find those glasses. Now these glasses right here, I think I'm pretty sure I must have lost them in that Gatlinburg hotel a couple of years ago. I must have left them in that hotel because they have been gone ever since I had them on in that hotel. That was the last time I saw of those glasses. The last time I ever saw them. And since they never showed up in two years, never showed up in two years. I bet I left them there because they would have showed up somewhere by now and they haven't showed up anywhere. And the last time I had those was two years ago in the old town. They've been gone ever since. They could show up, I guess, two years later. Could they? Maybe. I don't know. But I'll find them. They'll show up. But I had them on right when I walked in here. I had them on and um, it's just driving me nuts. But I'm, I, have to, I have to keep three or four pair of glasses. If I don't have four pair of glasses, I'd just be, I, I would just be because I lose my glasses all the time. I lose them all the time. And then, I, and then I'll be like, I like to be wearing these and then I'll eventually find the other pair. But that one pair, that one pair that I lost, I never did find them in two years. And that just makes sense that I probably left them in that hotel, I bet. And that makes me sick because those were fairly new. Those still had a lot of life left in them. And, they were a good pair. I hated that I left those. Usually when I go to a hotel, I keep all my stuff. I learned this by going down and visiting my mother. When, when my mother was alive, I'd go down to Georgia and see her. And when she was living in the living assistance facility, I had to stay at a hotel. And one thing I learned traveling, well, this is what I do. This is, I don't travel anymore like I used to, but when I did travel, I always kept all my luggage, all my things together. And I always kept everything that I possibly could in my bags as much as, you know what I'm saying? I mean, sometimes you got to put things in the bathroom, like toothbrush, toothpaste or whatever. But I try, I always try to keep everything together. That way nothing gets left. But yeah, I left those glasses. I bet I left them in that hotel because they've never been seen. That's been... It'll be two years in January those glasses disappear, but the blue ones that I normally wear, that I've been wearing lately. Oh, what in the world? I gotta give up. I'm not gonna drive myself crazy over. I just gotta stop. That's why I have to have four pairs. That's why I have to keep four pairs. Here thinking how wonderful would it be in another month from now 
I was able to walk three miles in one hour. That's like 20 minutes a mile. I don't see it happen. I see the pain clinic tomorrow morning about my back problem. I'm struggling now with 15, 20 minute walk, let alone an hour. You know, somehow I could lose some weight. Think how much better it would be for me if I lost about 80 pounds or 100 pounds. That would be 80 to 100 pounds less for my plantar fasciitis feet to carry. The problems I have with my bone system, my heat hips to carry and my low back to carry, everything to carry. That'd be so, so much better for me, wouldn't it? I'm gonna lose about 80, especially 100 pounds. If I get down to like 175, that'd be awesome. Y'all wouldn't even recognize me. This is the craziest thing ever happened to me. Craziest thing, crazy. I just mentioned, I just mentioned about losing these glasses on my face. They've been gone, I'm serious, ever since the last time I went to that hotel, and that's been almost two years ago. They've been gone ever since. Could not find them. And I've lost a pair of glasses that I had today on my face when I came home. And I don't know, a few months ago, I lost this medicine that I had, and I found it underneath this couch. I found it, like, oh, sorry. I found it underneath this couch when I lost this. I lost this medicine. Well, I don't know. Something was just telling me, why don't you look underneath this couch these things popped up. These things been gone two years. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. These things are playing double oh, yeah. nasty. Man, these are like a very these things are like I gotta find those glasses though, but the good news is these frames right here are like almost brand new. They've been, I mean, I bought these frames. I'm trying to think, how long did I have these frames? And then I lost them. They've been underneath this couch the whole time. I got spots on them. I still got. I can't believe I found these glasses. I thought I left them in that hotel because they've been gone ever since. And I was just mentioning, I was just talking about how I lost them. And then I found them. If I could just find those other pair of glasses, man, I'd be, how many pairs I got now? One, I got one, two, three, four. I'll have five pairs of glasses. If I can, I have to keep that many because I lose them all the time. That's why. I just can't help it. I can't help it. I can't, I don't like it. I hate losing shit. I hate losing them. I try to always keep, I keep my wallet and my car keys like, I keep my wallet and my car keys right there all the time. And that keeps me from losing them. But sometimes I lose my wallet and my car keys. But I'm like tickled to death I found these. Because these frames, man. Golly. But those frames that I lost that I'm looking for, those are a special made, those are a special kind of frames that won't like you can bend them and they won't break they'll show up just like these show up i've lost these for two years and they just showed up ain't that crazy
I found those daggone glasses. No wonder I couldn't find them. I see now, I kept thinking they were here. I kept coming here, coming here, coming here. Do you see them down there? I can see how that's hard to find, all them wires. See all those wires and shit I got underneath here? I thought they were here. I kept looking for them right here, and here's where they were. Here's where the... I'm sorry about to lose my other guy. Here's where they were. They were laying right down here. I kept thinking they were there. Found them. Well, well, it's been a good day, and it's been a good thing that I lost those glasses because the reason why it's a good thing, excuse me. The reason why, I'm sorry, I think the burp that come out unexpected. The reason why that's a good thing is because it made me find these. They've been gone for two years and they've been underneath my couch the whole time. Okay, I found my glasses. Oh yeah. best time to go into Walmart really is between 6 and 8 o'clock in the morning before everybody gets woke up good you go in there when the sun's up especially on a sunny day you go in there on a sunny day man I'm telling you what it's stand in line can't stand very well. I can stand. I can walk. Sometimes I walk into Walmart and I don't, I'm not even using my walker. But it's like I got a certain time limit. I got to get in and get out. The time 
time is clicking, you know. There actually is a scientific rationale for this. Sugar intake elevates levels of a chemical in the brain called serotonin which has a calming effect. This is a sweet roll I eat in the morning. Maybe one thing that's making me fat. I don't eat a lot of food, but if you eat a lot of sugar and carbohydrates, I think that's, if it's, it's not how much I'm eating that's making me fat because I don't eat a lot of food. It can't be how much. Because I eat a third. I eat about a third. No, no exaggeration. Absolute truth. Telling it like it is. I eat a third of the amount of food that I used to eat when I was about 70 pounds lighter than I am now. So it's got to be what I'm eating. It's probably the sweet shit. Called fixing the sugar fetish? That'd be that when you get older, your metabolism slows down. And then it's got to be where I was told that I have a uh, pituitary gland problem. The pituitary gland, also known as the master gland, produces and releases hormones that regulate many bodily functions. I don't know why, but I'll be honest with you. I was told by the endocrinologists that I have now that my pituitary gland looked fine on the MRI. I don't believe him. I just don't believe him. And I'll tell you why I don't believe him. I know he's a doctor and I'm not, but let me give you my reason why I don't believe him when he said my pituitary gland looks fine. Number one, number one, he's not ordered an MRI of my brain. Number one, he's not ordered an MRI of my brain. Number two, number two, the endocrinologist that ordered an MRI of my brain, Dr. Joanne Langton in Marstown, Tennessee, told me that my pituitary gland did not look healthy. She was looking at my labs one day and I didn't know it. She didn't tell me everything at first. She didn't tell me. She just looking at my labs one day. She says, I think I need to do a uh, MRI of your brain. See what's going on in your brain from looking at your labs. That's all she said at an office visit. So she ordered the MRI. And then I had a follow-up appointment. Now this is when I lived in Marstown, probably about around 15 years ago or so. So she orders an MRI and then I go to the follow-up appointment. And she says, I've got good news and I've got bad news about your brain. I'm like, let me guess, the bad news is I don't have one. I would dance and be merry, life would be a ding a dairy if I only had a brain. So, well, the good news first. The good news is I thought you had a pituitary tumor by the way your labs looked. It just looks like you we got a pituitary tumor, but the good news is you do not have a tumor in your brain. That's the good news. She goes, but the bad news. But the bad news. Hypopituitarism is a rare condition in which the pituitary gland doesn't make one or more hormones or doesn't make enough hormones. The pituitary gland is a kidney bean sized gland at the base of your brain. It is part of the body's system of glands that make hormones, called the endocrine system. The pituitary gland makes several hormones. They act on nearly every part of the body. She said my pituitary gland didn't look healthy. It looked like it was swiveled up really bad. 
And she said, that's probably what's causing you to have all these hormone problems. I have, I, I have zero, I, my body makes zero testosterone. Body don't make testosterone. That's what can, what regulates testosterone, the pituitary gland. My body makes zero T4. Now I have problems with T3s. That's thyroid problems. What regulates that pituitary gland? I have problems sleeping at night. I have hypersomnia problems where my brain goes awake and then I go to sleep. Wake and which is hypersomnia. That's what Roseanne Barker told me at Barker Sleep Institute. What is that a symptom of? Pituitary disorders can lead to sleep disorders and are common in people with these conditions due to the significant role hormones play in regulating the sleep-wake cycle. The pituitary gland, often called the master gland, is crucial in hormone production and regulation set. So I think, well, no think about it. There's no thinking about it. It, it just is. The problem I got with my hormones, my back is hurting. I got to lean back again. Oh, that hurts. Uh, the problem with my hormones, which also affects my sleep. Not only that, in my sleep, I have problems. I stop breathing, my brain stem. I have central sleep apnea. Central sleep apnea, CSA, occurs when the brain's area that controls your breathing does not function correctly during sleep. CSA is a sleep disorder. Obstructive sleep apnea, OSA, is caused by blockages in the upper airway that restrict oxygen to the body. That causes breathing to repeatedly stop and start during sleep. It occurs when the brain doesn't send proper signals to the muscles that control breathing. In my brain stem, brain stem shuts my lungs off when I fall asleep. So I've got that. I do sleep with a CPAP machine and instead of stop breathing 92 times an hour, I only, with the machine, I actually just stop breathing about two or three times an hour. So the machine helps significantly, but it's not perfect. I still um, stop breathing, just not 92 times an hour. Doctor told me I better sleep with that CPAP every single night because when you stop breathing like that, that can cause a cardiac arrest. And if untreated, sleep apnea can triple the risk of an individual having a heart attack it doubles the risk of individuals developing atrial fibrillation. Mm -hmm. Many people with high blood pressure have high blood pressure because they have underlying sleep apnea. Okay. It more than doubles the risk of developing congestive heart failure, which is a progressive terminal condition, and it doubles the risk of individuals dying suddenly while they're sleeping. So or heart attack. So it's important to sleep with that. Took me a while to get used to that thing. I had to practice it for several months, and I finally got to where I could sleep with it. Now you can't sleep. So, and I think this overweight problem I have right here is something to do with my pituitary gland too. To be honest with you, so I think a lot of what's wrong with me has to do with my pituitary gland. And your pituitary gland that regulates your testosterone. Testosterone, of course, everybody knows affects libido, it affects your muscles, but it also it also uh, causes bone growth problem. It causes your it causes osteoarthritis. It causes a lot of problems. Testosterone does, and so my testosterone is causing problems with my muscles and my bones. I got problems with my back. Probably comes from having testosterone problems which comes from the problem I have with my pituitary gland. So a lot of problems that I have health-wise is all summed up with the leading problem with my pituitary gland. But I don't know why my present endocrinologist tried to tell me the other day at the office. It looked like I was telling him, I was telling him exactly what's been spoken here on this video telling him everything about my pituitary gland what dr langton said when i told him that when i told him that 
he was just in the computer quiet reading. I, I think he was researching. He was researching something that I was talking about. what he was doing. He was researching something. And he spent a while in the computer. And then he went out of the room for a minute. And then he come back in the room. And then he said, well, according to your last MRI, your brain, your pituitary gland is fine. I don't think it is. There has to be a reason why Dr. Langton told me that. Dr. Langton, Dr. Joanne Langton, then old doc in Marstown, she wouldn't lie to me. She wouldn't order an MRI of my brain if she didn't think there was a reason to. And it makes total sense. The sleeping problem I have, the thyroid, the testosterone problem I have, that's all linked to pituitary gland problems. It makes way, way more sense to believe what Dr. Langton said about me than Dr. Mahmood. But it's okay. I still go to him anyway. I ain't got no choice really to go to him. And I don't think what he said was right. I think what Dr. Langton told me is right. And Dr. Roseanne Barker. I used to see her for sleep apnea, but now I see Dr. Kowser. But... She told me I had hypersomnia. I didn't know. I didn't know when she was telling me that I had hypersomnia at the time that that could be linked to pituitary gland problems, and it can. So, sums it all up for me right there, folks. What's wrong with my head? It's, all, it's mostly my... Plus, I have an autoimmune disease problem. My pituitary gland problem is screwing my sleep up. It's what's causing me to have this anxiety disorder. Look at my arm. Goosebumps all over my arm, messing with my sleep. It's what causes anxiety and depression. It's what causes me to have a, a thyroid problem so severe. I have to take 200 micromilligrams of T4 plus T3, 5 milligrams of T3. That, without that, I go into a coma. It's called a myxedema coma. Levels of thyroid hormones become very low, the symptoms get even worse and can result in a serious condition called myxedema coma. Myxedema coma is a rare but life-threatening condition. People with hypothyroidism who are in or near a coma should be taken to an emergency department. So I have to have... So I'm trying, what I'm trying to do, I'm just trying to figure out what has got me so screwed up. What has got me so screwed up? It could all be summed up with two things going on. It's my pituitary gland. My pituitary gland is affecting all my hormones, which is affecting my sleep. It's affecting my muscles. affecting a lot of things, even the way my, my bone problems. And the autoimmune disease problem I have with psoriasis, Hashimoto's, and uh, the platelet disease, ITP platelet disease, um... I've got like five autoimmune diseases. I can't remember the name of them. One of them affects my thyroid, skin, thyroid, skin, uh, heart, platelets. Uh, oh, yeah, RA. I got osteoarthritis, but I also have rheumatoid arthritis. So I got like five autoimmune diseases. That's really got me screwed up. So, uh,. There's an autoimmune disease of the, look here, there is an autoimmune disease I found out online of the pituitary gland. Right here, look at this. Anti-PIT1 hypophysitis, anti-PIT1, antibody syndrome is a newly described pituitary autoimmune disease characterized by acquired and specific growth hormone. There has to be a reason why I've got a swiveled up, unhealthy pituitary gland. I bet it's that. I bet it's that. I try to get the doctor to help me figure that out. The one I got now, he's like, oh, from your last MRI of your brain, it looks like it's okay. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. There's a reason why I have to take, there's a reason why I have to take all this testosterone and thyroid, all this hormone medicine. I, Dr. Langton's more believable to me than what he's saying. He just don't want to. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I, I, I just, there's a reason why I had to take this medication. I take. Uh, 
it's all related to pituitary gland problems. There's a reason why Dr. Langton ordered me an MRI and said what she said to me. I, I believe Dr. Langton more than I do him. So it's okay. I'm gonna still I'm gonna keep going to him. I mean I, I know that's it. I don't have to have it defined by a doctor because I know what I know. Uh, I can live with it now that I know. I just like to say what the hell's wrong with me because I've been this way 20 years. I've had this anxiety disorder for 20 years where I wake up in the morning, red face, goosebumps, all these problems I've been talking about right now have been going on ever since I was in my 30s. And I just like to know what is going on with me? What is causing this? What is this? I just like to know the name of it. Just so that I'm not crazy. You know, so I know I'm not crazy. And it's pituitary gland problems. It's most likely, I think, an autoimmune disease of the pituitary gland. There is such of a thing. What other what else what what other reason would there be? Why well, my pituitary gland is swiveled up, doesn't look healthy, other than it's not a brain tumor causing it. What other reason would it be other than an autoimmune disease of the pituitary gland? I'm tempted to just have a talk with the doctor about that. What other reason would there be? But he claims my pituitary gland looks fine. No, it don't. I don't care what he says. It's either Dr. Langton's told the truth or right or he's right because what he's saying is in opposition of what Dr. Langton said. And what Dr. Langton said makes more sense than what he's saying. Way more sense, don't it? I mean, honestly. Anyway, I'm going to get off here. Thanks for watching. I'm at, I just got finished with my pain clinic here at UT. They're going to order another MRI on my low back. And, uh, right here is paperwork where they're going to be doing, oh, it's upside down. Paperwork right here. They're going to be doing a procedure on my neck. procedure starts at 320 but I got to be there at 220 and I need to have a driver I need to have a driver I don't have nobody to drive me or they could do the procedure awake but the problem is this I told them if I lay on my stomach you got 10 minutes to get the procedure done or I will be in tremendous pain my neck pain always breaks out really strong, really hard if I lay on my stomach for around 10 minutes. And I really need to be put to sleep. But if I'm going to be put to sleep, I need a driver. And, and not just somebody to drive me, but with the, when it's a hospital, they have to drive you. Cause it is UT Hospital. But they'll have to drive me and then... Uh, they'll have to wait on me here and then take me home. That's the way hospitals are. Whenever you're put to sleep in the hospital, drive me here, wait on me, be present here, and then drive me home. That's the way hospitals roll. UT Hospital. Just kind of down depressed right now. Let me see if I can get home. Okay, let's make like a tree and get out of here. Make like a tree and get out of here. Throw. Go.
I got handicap tags. Alright. Handicap tag folks. Don't have to pay for parking at QT.
killed the shit.